section 2.5 and yet more uh, on elementary uh, row operation matrices. So we saw in the last video, uh, I didn't go completely through the reduced row echelon form, uh, but um, I could have in that case. And uh, so what they mention here is theorem 2.5.8, and that is um, that uh, if A is non-singular or invertible, uh, then uh, one, um, A is row equivalent, uh, to I, and, uh, second, um, A is the product of elementary row matrices. Right, so the, um, the idea there is, um, right, that, that I, uh, I'm going to kind of shorten things to a um, single subscript, I guess, right, is that if A is non-singular, then what we, what we saw, right, was I could hit A with, you know, some E1, E2, E3, you know, up to however many I needed, EN. And if it's non-singular, right, I could eventually get to I. Okay? But then that means, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what this matrix is, uh, right? Uh, I just know I used a bunch of row operations. Um, but if I call it B, uh, B times A is I, and um, which means then that uh, B is equal to A inverse. It's the inverse of A. And, um, and so, you know, there's its inverse, uh, but that means A inverse is um, E n dot 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 down to you know E three E two E one. Okay, now that doesn't say that A is a product. Uh, you know, right away it doesn't say that A is a a product of uh, row matrices, elementary row matrices, but if I take the inverse of A inverse, right, A is the inverse of A inverse, and so that means it's uh, E1 inverse, uh, E2 inverse, E3 inverse, all the way up to En inverse. And so, um, uh, each of these, even though they're the inverses of the original elementary row matrices, um, these inverses are all also elementary row matrices. And, and so um, this actually gives us a way to um, uh, deal with uh, uh, finding an inverse using um, row reduction. Okay, and, and so what I can do is uh, I can augment A. Uh, they, they introduced the new word partitioned. Um, 
I start with this partition matrix, matrix or the augmented matrix of A and the identity, and I use these row operations on that uh, to find the inverse. Okay, and so you know we can we can kind of see how that's done uh, with uh, you know a pretty simple situation. Let's go with the matrix one, two, uh, three, and four. Okay, here's A, and so the idea is uh, augment this with a uh, uh, identity matrix, and so um, I have the matrix A. I, and that is just this matrix 1, 2, uh, 3, 4 with uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. And so um, uh, now, you know, as I look at this, well, the first thing I want to do is uh, multiply by um, E21 of negative 3. Okay, so uh, that times my matrix A I here. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that right is I want to take uh, negative 3 times uh, row 1 and um, uh, add that to row 2 and put it back in row 2. So uh, I do that. Uh, that becomes the matrix multiplication. Um, so I'm going with row two, so that's that uh, for the first row, then negative three, one, zero, and zero, zero, oops, no, zero, zero, one. What am I doing? Making this matrix way too big. Okay. So that's one, zero, negative three, one. And this is times 1, 2, 1, 0, 3, 4, 0, 1. And that equals um, what? Well, the top row stays the same. So I get uh, 1, 2, 1, 0. And the bottom row, well, I get negative 3 times 1 plus 1 times 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Um, then uh, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 and a 1 there. And so I have that. And now this matrix, um, again, I could multiply through by negative a half first, but I just happen to look at this, and, I, and that to me, the easiest thing to do first is add row two to row one and put that back into row one. And so I'll do that. Uh, I will multiply this thing by um, E12 of one. So that's, that's what I'm gonna use. And so let's do that. Uh, so I have uh, one, one, and uh, right. So, uh, yep, yeah, one, one, and then um, uh, zero, one. So there is my e one two of one, and multiply that times one two one zero. 0, negative 2, negative 3, 1. And that gives me um, 1. And then 2 plus negative 2 is 0. And 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. And finally, 0 plus 1 is 1. And the bottom row stays the same. 0, negative 2, negative 3, 1. And so I'm almost done. Uh, I just need to multiply through by negative one half, and so that is the e um, two of negative one half that I'm going to multiply by, and so um, 
e2 of negative one half uh, let's see what the heck is that that's one zero zero negative one half one zero negative two one zero negative two negative three one and when I'm done with that, I end up with um, 1, 0, negative 2, 1. Uh, multiplying through by the bottom by negative 1 half, I have 0, 1, uh, 3 halves, and negative 1 half. And so what happens then, when we get to the identity here, uh, we've gotten to a inverse here. And one way to see this is remember that with these these augmented matrices you know what we're doing is we're solving we're trying to solve something like um, a x equals the identity matrix right and when we do that we make the augmented matrix a and i and we do our row reduction and we get our answer, right? And this says, oh, you know, x11 uh, needs to be equal to negative two. Uh, x21 um, is one and, and so forth. Uh, um, and, and so this uh, solves our, um, uh, matrix equation here but this X is a 2 by 2 matrix okay so we've we've just solved it for the the two right hand sides uh, 1 0 and 0 1 way back here right we we just set it up where okay first we solve it for 1 0 then we solve it for 0 1 but we do it simultaneously and we get our a inverse and so let's try that out, right? If A inverse is equal to negative 2, 1, uh, 3 halves, negative 1 half, we should be able to multiply that by A or multiply A times that, either, you know, um, multiply it times A, either one, and get the identity. So uh, A again was what? 1, 2, 3, 4. And so let's try that. One, two, three, four times negative two, one, uh, three halves, and negative one half. And that is equal to, well, we get uh, negative two uh, plus three. I'm starting out well, that's one. And then we get one uh, minus one, that's zero. And then for the bottom row times first column, we get negative six, um, and then uh, plus 12 over two, which is positive six, so we get zero. And then uh, three and plus a negative two is one, and we get our identity. And we could even, you know, it of course should work on both sides, but hey, why not? We'll just check it, um, negative two, one. 3 halves, negative 1 half, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1. Uh, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, uh, and then plus 4, we get 0. Uh, we get a 3 halves and a negative 3 halves is 0. And we get uh, 3 halves times 2, so we get 3, um, and a minus 2, that's 1. Yay! Okay, so that's one way to calculate an inverse is um, just start with an augmented matrix like that, and then uh, row reduce until we get to the identity here. Now, if we can't get to the identity, oh, then A was uh, singular, okay? It didn't have an inverse. Uh, if we get a, a contradiction um, for any of these or an inconsistency. So, you know, that's fine. Uh, A might not have an inverse, but uh, 
if 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 it does, you know, this is one technique uh, to determine that inverse, and it's uh, uh, probably uh, about as efficient technique as you're going to find um, to do that. Is to do these row operations to get to the inverse. So that's uh, that's kind of nice, and. Uh, um, you know, so we can we can find our uh, inverse matrix that way. Um, let's see. So uh, I think that does it for that video.